Hello guys, this is uh, Dr. Palnepan Manikam. In this video, we are going to talk about fasting during religious festivals. My friend Saramana Kumar was like, Day pal, I am going to follow your fasting method completely on April 1. I was like, what, April Fool's Day? He was saying, no, I am going to completely fast on April 1 because on April 2nd, it is Ramzan, I am getting ready for biryani. I said, hey, it's not fasting, da, it is feasting. So in this video, I'm going to see how fasting is going to make us live longer and feasting after fasting is not good. Let's dive deep into it. I asked my friend Saravana Kumar, when is Ramzan? He was like, day pal, you asked me not to eat after sunrise and before sunset and we are doing the exact opposite thing during Ramzan. I know you are anti-Muslim, you are anti-Indian, you are an atheist. Now, so a day. Ramzan, huh? I want to eat biryani during Ramzan, right? I is saying Kali is rich in fiber. So see, fasting has been a constant theme for all religions, including Hindus, Christians and Muslims, because fasting is good. The problem is feasting after fasting. I'm not against any religious beliefs. I'm here to explain that you can make this fasting even more healthier and get double blessings. One, God's blessings and two is hormones hormonal blessings. Kanna, rendu leddu thinga asaya. See, the problem is when you feast after fasting late at night, you are disturbing the circadian rhythm of the hormones. It is like disturbing a sage in deep meditation. You will not get blessings. You will get only cursings. So there is a reason that every religion has fasting as a method of worship because fasting is good. Some people think that the more severe the fast is, they will live longer. God doesn't have that much time to go individually. In general, what he does is if you fast longer, he enhances the concept called autophagy so that you can clean your body yourself. See, our cells get damaged every day. Autophagy is a natural mechanism through which the cells digest the damaged components of the cells and clean it up. Autophagy literally means self-eating, self-destruction so that all the damaged cells can die and the new cells which is forming can be healthier. See, if autophagy doesn't happen, and all these damaged part of the cells starts multiplying by dancing to the tunes rakita rakita song enna vena nadakattu na sandoshama irupe and starts forming cancer cells when the damaged cells multiply it is the precursor for cancer cells the perfect analogy is your brush head if when your bristles on the brush head is damaged you need to replace it right if not it will become like my friend saravana kumar's brush where it will be very difficult to differentiate whether this is a bathroom brush or a toothbrush. So the main hormone that is an enemy to autophagy is insulin. Insulin is an anabolic hormone. It is a building hormone. It keeps on building cells no matter how the cells are damaged. Insulin is a perfect example of keeping the building strong but the basement is very weak. So in short when insulin is there autophagy will not happen but share autophagy might happen. Cells will build like people sitting on each other's laps and the cells will be completely damage before even reaching the destination. So this is what I have been mentioning in my channel all along is that we need to give rest to insulin so that autophagy can happen. So please do not eat anything after sunset or before sunrise so that this repair can happen. I told to one of my patients that if you eat after sunset autophagy will not happen and you can form cancer. He's like I can't sir. So all gods know that we will not follow this normal rule of physiology and that is why every religion is promoting fasting in my opinion. So in fasting you give rest to your body so there is no insulin because there is no food so autophagy can happen for a long time all your damaged part of the cells gets cleaned up and you get a new healthy cell every time you fast. The most important point to remember is insulin doesn't like this cleaning process. I think it is anti-BJP because it doesn't like Swachh Bharat. So it's not that when you fast, you get what you wish for. It is the other way around. When you fast, you become healthy to pursue whatever you wish for.
See, regardless of whatever religion we are, I think the main problem is when we break the fast. We are good at fasting, but when we break the fast, we think that we deserve all the amount of food that we are eating because we have put in all the hard work. The hard work of eating is much more than the hard work of fasting. So we think that since we have fasted for a long time, we need to eat a lot more so that we can replenish the energy. So we eat lots of sugary and unhealthy foods. So if you eat more than what you need, the excess calories get stored as belly fat. I have a friend called Shamim during my college days. All his goal was to eat one biryani before sunrise during Ramzan and one biryani after sunset. I told him that day quantity doesn't matter. Quality of the food matters. He says day homemade biryani da very high quality. So no matter whichever religion you follow most of the times breaking the fast happens only after sunset. Remember the sleep wake cycle of insulin. Insulin wakes up at sunrise and peaks around 2-3 pm and then settles down during sunset. So when we are fasting during daytime, insulin will be so proud of us. Hey pal, you didn't make me work at all. I'm so proud of you. Little does it know that a big storm is coming. We are like Vadivelu and insulin like his parents. Like we worship it during daytime and we beat it up after 6 p.m. See the concept I'm going to discuss now can be applied to any religion. But because Ramzan is coming next month, I want to focus on Ramzan for now. Usually during during Ramzan they eat two meals a day. The meals are called Suhar and Iftar. Suhar happens pre-dawn early in the morning before sunrise and Iftar happens after sunset and during this fasting hours they cannot even drink water. It is one of the strictest religious beliefs that I have seen and I am very very impressed and there are lots of fasting benefits with this approach. So I have a lot of Muslim friends so if something is wrong please forgive me. I am just making this video to explain about the concept of the sleep wake cycle of insulin. So in addition to all the benefits of fasting, I really want you to enjoy the benefits and do not counteract with eating unhealthy habits. So I'm going to tell you four points. Number one, Suhar, the first meal of the day, try to have it as close to sunrise as possible. For example, if sun rises around 6.30, you can have it around between 5 to 5.30. Try to delay it as much as possible within the religious beliefs so that you don't disturb the sleep-wake cycle as much as possible because insulin is slowly rising when the sun is rising. So you can enjoy the advantage of the autophagy and repair hormone phase a little bit longer. And point number two, the food that you eat as the first meal of the day is absolutely Absolutely important. It is going to give you energy for the rest of the day and also make sure that you eat healthy options that I'm going to discuss now. So since we can drink water during the day, fruits rich in high water content is an absolute must. For example, pineapple, mangoes, plums, which is high water content will keep you hydrated throughout the fasting period. When I said this to my friend Saravna Kumar, he was like, instead of eating fruits, why not we can eat ice cubes, right? So it can stay for a long time. A pretty idea. With this question, it is absolutely clear that his brain is evaporated. So second is you will need food to keep you full. Two things that can keep you full is protein and fiber. Protein you can get from egg, milk, cheese, yogurt and fiber. You could get it from grains, whole wheat bread, brown rice, all those that is rich in fiber. Fiber, fiber, fiber that will keep you full. I can guarantee you that your fasting will be healthy. For the digestive system, fiber is like our favorite chocolate during childhood. We don't eat it right away. We keep on tasting it throughout the day that will keep us full. It's exact same analogy. See, but the major problem is our food is rich in carbohydrates. Carbohydrates gets digested very easily that you will feel hungry again. Your body will be like our body veil is our day. So the third point is if the when you break the fast try to have your dinner as close to sunset as possible. For example if the sun sets around 6.30 pm try to have your if the around 6.30 or 7 pm if possible. The biggest mistake I have seen in my friend circle is that while they are breaking the fast they have snacks first like bhaji, bunda, samosa and then they prepare for dinner late at night. This is the biggest mistake that we could easily 
avoid. So try to have the full bone dinner around 6.30 or 7 p.m. when the sun sets and you don't have to have anything late at night. People have this habit of drinking milk before going to bed. It is an absolute no-no. Please do not disturb your insulin unnecessarily. And more importantly, don't eat a lot of desserts or sweets because remember whenever you eat sweets, it's high sugar. So insulin is going to wake up. It is sleeping already. So don't wake it up. So avoid desserts and sweets as much as possible. When you are in the fasting phase, eating phase looks much greener. But when you come to the eating phase, nobody is eating green. The reason I'm stressing so much on this is it is very, very easy to put on belly fat after such kind of extended fasting period and it is absolutely difficult to take it off after the festival is over so please please be cautious and try to eat healthy when you are breaking the fast and also when you are waking up as a first meal of the day so let me give you an example if I am following fasting this is what I will do as the first meal of the day pre-dawn for protein I will take milk egg or protein smoothie for fiber I will take vegetables or oats kanji which has lots of fiber and for water content I will take a fresh fruit and also two to three dates I'll be very careful in dates because even though dates have rich fiber content it is rich in sugar as well so we need to be very very cautious and take just very limited quantities of dates and one big glass of water to keep me hydrated throughout the day so when I break the fast uh, after sunset what I will do is for protein I will take grilled chicken or grilled fish if you are a non-vegetarian or if you're vegetarian you could use vegan sources of protein as well but key thing is it has to be grilled and not fried and for fiber it is okay to eat rice and roti but very, very limited quantities I will prefer brown rice and will prefer uh, roti because the fiber content is slightly high and also a fresh fruit and for dessert instead of sweets I will still stick with one glass of milk with chia seeds which has lots of fiber as well the bottom line is you will have to have low carb high protein and high fiber diet for vegetarians yogurt is a wonderful source of protein so Greek yogurt or a hung curd so regular yogurt will not have that much amount of protein so you have to choose between these two options so that you can increase your protein content if you have followed my channel closely I have never asked you to like my channel or subscribe my channel all I'm asking is if you think that you got anything out of this video I would consider a little amount of donation to Aishwaryam Trust where we take care of hospice patients where they cannot even walk they cannot even go to the bathroom by themselves we provide 24 server nursing services by employing full-time nursing staff and physicians I hope this was helpful I wish you a very very happy and healthy Ramzan and please don't forget to send the biryani okay we will eat together at 3 p.m. where the insulin sensitivity is high after you finish the Ramzan festival okay again I wish you a very very happy and healthy Ramzan one belly at a time it is absolutely important I'll see you in the next video bye bye